Open Master League is controversial, to say the least. The Pokemon are really hard to get. You have to raid a lot. You have to spend a lot of money. And you also have to spend a ton of Stardust and time in order to build a competitive team. I'm just going to point it out. Master League is not for everyone. You can't sit with us! Definitely the most exclusive league that we have in the entire Go Battle League system. But when you have the right tools, it can honestly be really fun. I don't have said tools, but down deep in sunny Florida, there is a trainer. One of the best Master League trainers I've ever met. Not you, coach. My buddy Mitch. And Mitch sent me some battles with Zygarde, a Shundo ho -Oh, and a Hundo Xerneas in the Master League. And we're going to check him out right now. Okay, everybody, before we get into these games, we're going to do a 30 second crash course on Dragon Breath counting. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the Dialga is at the Draco Meteor or if it's just an Iron Head bait or if Palkia is at the Aqua Tail or the Spatial Rend. So if you look at Dialga, it's going to be 17 Dragon Breaths to the Iron Head and then 22 to the Draco Meteor. For Palkia, 12 Dragon Breaths to the Aqua Tail, 22 to the Draco Meteor. For origin form Palkia, it's going to be 17 Dragon Breaths to the Spatial Ren. Now, I always like to compare this to two turn fast attacks because they're the most popular in the game. If you're using Counter or Mudshot or Steel Wing, it's going to be eight and a half counters for Dialga's Iron Head, 11 counters for Draco Meteor, regardless of whether it's Dialga or Palkia, six counters for Palkia's Aqua Tail, eight and a half counters for the Spatial Ren. So one more time, six counters for Aqua Tail, eight and a half for Spatial Rend or Iron Head, and 11 counters for the Draco Meteor. That being said, let's get into these games. All right, everybody, I don't play a lot of Master League, so for me, and for probably a lot of you, this is gonna be like a tutorial, but Mitch is one of the best Master League players I know, so let's see what he does. He's got the Solgaleo in the lead, and if you look at Mitch's overall team composition, he's actually pretty well equipped to deal with this Pokemon. Definitely a little bit pesky, right? It's a little bit hard to get, so I know, uh, just like Zygarde, right? A lot of trainers see the Solgaleo and they think, oh, you know, it must be nice to have a good IV combination. First Psychic Fang does come through, Second one comes through as well, and suddenly the uh, the bulkiest Pokemon in the format, right? Zygarde complete form, 100% uh, form is now down almost to the yellow. Drops down to the yellow. Quick swap into a uh, best buddy Dialga origin form, and we see Mitch go for the Ho Oh. Now he keeps Xerneas in the back uh, in this particular situation. Does not want to take a roar time. Great shield there by Mitch. Going to go ahead here for, I believe this is a Mystical Fire from the, uh, from the excuse me, Sacred Fire from the ho -Oh. Oh, he's going to roast me for that. <laughs> Sacred Fire ho -Oh. uh, Now he's got about half health, which is definitely problematic. Comes in with the Palkia. So this team was a Solgaleo double origin form uh, Pokemon in the back. Definitely very strong in Master League, especially uh, after the ho -Oh tour. Great bait there by Mitch. With the Sacred Fire, trying to get up to the Brave Bird, but can't quite get it. That's fine. I like this play a lot because this forces the Palkia to throw the Aqua Tail. If Mitch goes for the Brave Bird there, he just gets Dragon Breath down. But he's got the Xerneas, right? So nothing really to worry about. Xerneas, I think, I mean, arguably the most powerful Pokemon in the format right now due to its coverage. It's very similar to Zacian, right? You've got a Fairy type attack. Oh, Fire Blast. You've got a Fighting type attack, but he finds the CMP against the Palkia Origin, which is absolutely mental to force the shield on the Moon Blast. We see the Solgaleo come in, two fast attacks and make the swap and the catch. Very nice play here, probably just a Psychic Fang again, and it is. I think that Zygarde this time though, can it might be able to Dragon Tail down. It's gonna take four, which means that Solgaleo gets one more attack. He saves the shield for the Xerneas, but you can tell this is pretty much done and dusted. We're gonna see the Palkia come in, goes for the Crunch. Uh, Mitch, you're gonna see this time and time again. He's so careful with his energy, He's so uh, calculated with every single thing he does. Doesn't get to the earthquake there, but doesn't matter. Gonna go ahead here for the moon blast against the Palkia origin form. This is gonna be more than enough, and that's a game one win for Mitch. Going into game number two here, going up against Kanahag, there's going to be a Dialga origin form in the lead. I don't know exactly how this goes, but Mitch doesn't like it, right? That steel typing on Dialga, whether it's origin form or just a regular, is always going to help it so much in the Dragon versus Dragon matchups. Uh, maybe trying to catch a uh, Sacred Fire here on the Ho-Oh swap. 
doesn't get the catch, but it's a Shadow ho -Oh, and this, the, wow, the CP is 4420. That's actually a really good uh, Shadow ho -Oh because, uh, as you know, Mitch does have the Shundo here. So, actually, it is a, oh my gosh, that is a Shundo Shadow? I'm looking here at Yanku Jean's graphic over on the side. Uh, his his graphics are always at a level 51, right? So I think that is a Shundo Shadow ho -Oh. That is a flex. That's a flex if I've ever seen one. Going to go here for the Sacred Fire against the Zygarde. The ground typing really kicks in there. Oh, nasty Dragon Tail down there by Mitch. Just going to gobble it up. He sees the Dialga come in. The thing is, if you take an Iron Head here... Uh, I, I think that you're closer to Dragon Breath range. He really wants the Earthquake, which I totally understand. Just trying to get the shields down. This is an easy shield call, though, for the opponent. So he's going to switch into the Xerneas. Going to look for some energy. Uh, Iron Head is still super effective, right? Still a, a pure fairy type. Xerneas does need to protect shield up. And now comes in with the Lando. I just want to say Lando is Mitch's favorite Pokemon. He loves Sandseer. He wishes it was stronger. He tells me that all the time. He's like, ah, we should buff Sandseer Storm. It should be better. But I don't know, Mitch. It's already pretty good, man. So we're going to see what happens because the first Sandseer Storm does connect. Attack does fall 100% of the time. Just like uh, Sex Panther in Anchorman, 100% of the time it works, 100% of the time, I guess. Second Moonblast does connect. Going to look for a close combat here against the Dialga. It's going to be close. He's able to get it. Uh, Fairy Typing does double resist Dragon Breath, so I would not be shocked by a swap. Actually, excuse me, he took both the shields. So he's going to get the KO. No need to switch there because Mitch just gets the win. Game number three kicking off here against Andrea. We've got a, a uh, purified holo in the lead. I don't play much Master League, so this is really cool for me to see. We're going to see, uh, speaking of seeing, we're going to see Lugia safe swap in here against the Shundo ho -Oh here from Mitch. A uh, question for everybody that's watching. Would you like to see Ho-Oh or Lugia get Fly one day? I think it'd be pretty consistent damage for Ho-Oh because it would sub out for the Brave Bird. Uh, kind of like Talonflame treatment, right? Talonflame only had the Brave Bird for so long, but I'm curious what you think. Let's say Aeroblast through. Luckily, no boost there for Lugia, but it does mean that Ho-Oh can go for these Sacred Fires uh, almost back to back. At this point, though, I think you might want to let this go. No, actually, wants to control switch advantage and go for it a big incinerate down. Oh, I like that play a lot. The question is, can he get to a Brave Bird against the opposing ho -Oh? And he does. Absolutely calculated by Mitch. Fire resisting fire. One of the few types that resists itself. But it does pay off. Also spinning stops at the same time. Coming in with the origin. Or excuse me, not the origin form. I'm so used to seeing it. Just a regular Dialga at 4565. That is a beast of a Pokemon. Going to go for the Moonblast here. Uh, I like this play. I mean, this is fine. You're not going to throw the close combat too early. His opponent knows that. But he does get the attack drop, which is actually huge. Moonblast does not proc that often, but it's very nice to get it. Does peel away that final protect shield, clearing a path for Zygarde. At this point, just going to let this go. I like this play a lot. You already weakened the Ho-Oh -Oh earlier. Uh, you can, I think you can tank this Iron Head, right? But he's, he think, he's thinking in terms of relative damage. What's actually going to do the most damage? In this matchup and not even going to need to find out that's another win for mitch here in master league we're gonna go right into this next game though med l90 versus mitch dialga origin form in the lead we saw him switch to ho -Oh the last time he encountered this so let's see what he does does the same thing ho -Oh safe swap here against dialga origin form gonna build up some additional energy sacred fire a little expensive oh his opponent actually makes the catch this time uh, if you remember, in the last game we just watched, opponent, uh, or two games ago, opponent was not able to make the catch. He called it. This time, opponent does get it right. Going for the Brave Bird. This is nice because ho -Oh is at such good health. You can actually absorb a lot more of these incinerates and get to another Brave Bird, which is very threatening. He probably compared the charge, uh, the, the uh, CP already and probably has a good idea if he's going to win the charge tag party tie. I was not paying attention. So he knows <laughs> that if uh, his opponent threw, then that would go go through. Yeah, 4367. Oh, they're both hundos, so it, it would have been a coin flip. Going to come in here with the Zygarde versus the Ho-Oh. Things don't look great for Mitch. I mean, he knows that there's an origin form Dialga in the lead, but at this juncture, he needs to KO this Ho-Oh as soon as possible. Uh, actually going to tank another charge tag. This is clever by Mitch because it means he can build up potentially to the Earthquake. Oh, and he does get a defense drop there from the Brave Bird on the Holo. Very nice. If he lands the Earthquake into Dialga, it's going to be nasty. Oh, no. <laughs> Sends out the Lugia here. 
at the worst possible time. Oh, double resisted damage into Lugia. That stinks, man. But he's got his Xerneas left. Doesn't does not want to take an Arrow Blast. Uh, again, thinking in terms of relative damage, most damage output possible would either be the Arrow Blast from Lugia or an Iron Head from Dialga. He's gonna let this one through. I like this play a lot because you do double resist the Dragon Tails. In comes Dialga. I think this is a shield worthy situation. Uh, obviously, maybe uh, build up maybe three more. Oh, he's only going for one more. Doesn't want to take any more damage. Gonna throw the close combat here against the Dialga. Bam! That's a knockout into Origin Form Dialga. Pushing for the Moonblast. Double resisting all these Dragon Tails. I know this is I know this is a strong attack, but I don't think it's enough, right? No, it's not. Lugi is way too thick. Coming with the Zygarde, Dragon Tail versus Dragon Tail. Lugi gets to a charge attack here at the very end. It's definitely gonna be enough to KO, but a purified Lugia. Cannot hang against the Zern. Zern comes in. Two Geomancies get the KO. Massive win there for Mitch in Master League. Just rolling through these games. Actually, no rest for the Wicked. We're going right into this next battle here for Mitch. Ho-Oh lead. So, uh, I think he stayed in last time we saw Ho-Oh. This makes a lot of sense. Don't want to send your Fairy type against it. And you don't want to go down energy in the mirror. So, he stays in. Going to see Ho-Oh fire for charge attack. If it is the Brave Bird... That opens up a switch window for him. It's a sacred fire. The ground and dragon typing here for Zygarde is so nasty. It's so oppressive because it, it really doesn't fear anything besides ice or Dialga, right? Or the occasional fairy. Going to go here for two more dragon tails. Ah, if this is Brave Bird, this is going to be close, right? Another sacred fire, though. Going to go for one more in the midst of the incinerate. Three turn dragon tail versus one, uh, excuse me, one five turn incinerate. Does land the crunch, does get the KO, wins lead in the zeros against the Ho-Oh. And now it's Lugia time. And I think that uh, Mitch is very happy to be in this position because now he can just fire off a crunch. Go for the defense fall, doesn't get it. Switches in the Ho-Oh here, preserving his Zygarde. Opponent didn't switch out in the lead. So uh, potentially we did Zygarde in the back. I don't even look at Zygarde that way. I think Zygarde is just such a, a bulk monster, a neutral titan that you just have to respect it. If you don't have a hard counter for it, it's gonna just chip away at you and it's really hard to bring it down. Gonna go for one incinerate. I like that play quite a bit. Five turn incinerate versus two, three turn dragon tails. Does pull out the Dialga and you have to know already this is a GG's. Even though Ho doesn't get to the charge attack, you have a two shielded Xerneas in your back pocket. You can probably just build it to the double close combats. If Mitch is really fancy, he might try to catch. Actually, no shield to first Iron Head. This is savage, all right? This is absolutely savage. There's no reason. Mitch, stop. You already won. You already won the game. <laughs> Goes for the uh, close combat. First one's not enough. Fires off the second one for good measure. Uh, I think this is going to be... Oh, it actually shields, so he cleans things up with the Zygarde. Very, very nice play by Mitch there. Zygarde, absolute beast. I mean... His opponent had a couple answers in the back, but it wasn't enough. That is a solid 5-0. Mitch pushing up towards expert range. Again, these are battles from the previous season, but because Master League hasn't changed at all, I thought it'd be great to showcase some of these elite, powerful Pokemon to show you what they can do uh, in the league to rule them all. We've got Nogu here, our next opponent. Palkia Origin Form. Okay, so... We see this instant swap in a Landorus. This is actually great uh, for Mitch, right? This is actually very nice because he can, if he can control this matchup right here, he can line up his Xerneas against that Palkia later. And if you've seen one of the origin forms, there's a good shot. You're going to see the second one, right? So it could be Dialga in the back. Crunch getting fired off here by the Zygarde. Does drop the defense of the Lando, which is really nice. Lando going to go for another Sandseer Storm. I'm telling you, it's Mitch's favorite move. Attack does fall again. If Zygarde didn't have attack before, it definitely does not now. Very, very tough uh, for the Zygarde as it gets bogged down in this Lando matchup. But I do still believe he wants to control Switch. He's going to roll the dice one more time. Sandseer Storm, 100% chance. And look at these Dragon Tails now. They're barely doing anything. And at this point, I think you need to shield, right? Actually not going to shield. Thought about it. Oh, no, he did. He did. Thought about it. Uh, almost changed his mind, but decided to shield in the end. At this point, I assume the Palkia will come back. No, actually, Zerni is trying to get an energy lead. This is also pretty clever. Uh, I almost wonder if Mitch could have gone to Ho-Oh here and just banked the EQ. 
Because at this point, uh, Xerneas just gets farmed down. Or excuse me, uh, Zygarde just gets farmed down by the Xerneas. Gonna go for the crunch here. This is single resisted by fairy typing. And uh, does not drop the defense. Oh, and he switches in Palkia anyway. Well, that was nice. Because now he can come in with his own Xerneas into the Palkia matchup. Uh, again, we talked about the Dragon Breath counting. Uh, Spatial Rend, Draco Meteor, Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail's not gonna do very much. Takes six counters to get there. Uh, so pacing is pretty quick, but Xerneas is not concerned. Goes for the Moonblast here. This will knock out the Palkia Origin form. In comes the Xerneas. Mitch doesn't even need to shield because he knows he has the ho in the back. I actually really admire this team construction. This team is very, very strong. He does get another win, which is also really strong. Now in expert territory, let's check out Exploration AS. Meloetta in the lead. This is a Pokemon that is actually my best mythical that I own. And I'm very excited to see it in action. Uh, we safe swap the Dialga origin form and meet it with the Xerneas, which is a very nice position for Mitch to be in. He overcharges like heck. We saw the first close combat not be enough in this matchup, but it is going to bring this Dialga very low. Uh, at this point though, I wonder, I don't think Xerneas can farm down. Pretty tough CMP there by Mitch as well on the uh, Iron Tail, or excuse me, Iron Head, Iron Tail, the Iron Head uh, Dialga, but he is going to fire up the close combat and get his shield back. Okay, that's actually pretty nice because now he can just spam off these close combats. Geomancy plus close combat is a nasty combination because it charges so quickly. I mean, why not? Why not just shield again? at this juncture, right? You know there's a normal type Meloetta with no energy. Actually, safe switches the Ho-Oh to get an incinerate ahead. Five head plays by Mitch, gathering so much energy. Meloetta can't do much, right? I believe that's a quick attack Meloetta. Uh, but man, I really wanted to see it put in some work, but it gets absolutely turned into a crisp by this sacred fire from the Ho-Oh at this juncture. Thunderbolt, oh, actually Meloetta with Thunderbolt. That is pretty sick. We know the Palkia is back there. We don't know the third Pokemon yet, but Ho-Oh looks really imposing because it's only one incinerate away from both of its moves. It's a Charm Primarina. Oh, this is absolutely disgusting. Gonna go ahead and throw the Brave Bird. Xerneas is still in very good health. Opponent top lefts. Mitch absolutely dominated that matchup uh, and the team composition was just stellar. Next matchup here against Shundo. Uh, we're gonna see Landris in the lead again. Uh, I think this, Mitch just stays here, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to line up the Lando versus the Ho-Oh, and the Fairy type Xerneas can fight back decently well, but it's not comfortable. Sandseer Storm comes through, ground versus ground, still drops the. Oh, I saw that. I, I, I saw that. Thought about pressing the crunch, but didn't. Goes into the Xerneas here against the Zygarde safe switch. Another best buddy Zygarde. I feel like the uh, the Spider-Man meme should have been triggered there. Earthquake does connect. Xerneas is going to overcharge quite a bit. Three turn Geomancy charges quite fast. Signature fast attack there for Xerneas. And it for a good reason. Moonblast does connect. Going to weaken that Xerneas, excuse me, that uh, Zygarde quite a bit. But Xerneas is forced to fire off the close combat here to try to get the knockout. And it does. Drops the defense, but Lando comes in. I mean, Lando's Sandseer Storm is going to do a lot of damage anyway. Uh, going to throw the close combat against a flying ground type, so this is going to be resisted, but it does pull the shield, which is actually very nice there for Mitch. That's actually a huge, huge boon to his efforts in this battle, because uh, once the Landris gets up in energy, you send a Pokemon in, no matter what it is, you're going to get debuffed. I wonder, going for the single Dragon Tail instead of just going straight for the Crunch, not sure how I feel about it, but he's got two Crunches loaded. He's going to uh, take a couple bites out of this Lando. First one does connect. No defense drop. Goes for a single Dragon Tail while he is only one stage debuffed. Going to go for another Crunch as well. Lando deep into the red. Goes to the Ho-Oh swap. Tries to make the cheeky switch in, but it is a Palkia origin form in the back. This is uh, this is a little bit scary, right? Because uh, Palkia does have access to the Aqua Tail. It's going to be really fast. But Ho-Oh is going to fire up the Brave Bird here. And uh, I like this play a lot. Stay aggressive, right? Opponent, opponent only has one shield. They do use the final one on the Brave Bird. But in the meanwhile, Mitch is already at a second Brave Bird. He knows he has the Zygarde, but it's really weak. I, I would be shocked if he did not shield that. Doesn't want to take any more Dragon Breath. This is also very smart by Mitch because uh, Dragon Breath would deal a lot more damage. But he does double, oh, double debuff his defense. You're going to see the Zygarde come in. Oh, this is not great. Uh, Dragon typing resists water, but the ground typing is weak to it. So it's going to be a neutral Aqua Tail. 
Zygarde, though, is a beast, and it takes down the Lando and the Palkia before you can even finish the sentence. Next battle coming up, this is Nax, I believe was the first name. Against a Palkia origin form, Mitch is going to stay in, does not want to swap the fairy type hard counter, does not want to go the Ho-Oh either for obvious reasons. Going to go for the crunch here against the Palkia origin form, try to get a defense fall, and the Dragon Tails put in work. Look at that big defense drop there on Palkia origin form. Knows this is not quite, oh actually it is, I'm so sorry, it is Spatial Ren, comes in with a Ho-Oh, this is a little tricky. Because of this juncture, it took one turn to switch in, five turn for each of those incinerates. Mitch is able to line up the crunch. Oh, gets another defense fall? Man. Mitch, what's going on? You got like a you got like a, a 75% crunch debuff rate. What's going on, man? Give me some of that. We're gonna see the sacred fire get to, uh, get fired off. No pun intended by his Shundo ho -Oh. What a flex. <laughs> Does drop down the, the uh, attack there of the Ho-Oh on the opposing side. Brave Bird does connect, but Ho-Oh withstands it due to the attack fall. We're going to get a simultaneous... Um, uh, okay. Um, maybe a bit of DRE there, but it works out, I guess. In comes the, the Shiny Landorus in the back. That's a 4475. Best buddy, Shiny Lando. Sandseer Storm does connect. It does a lot of damage. That is actually a very powerful move. I see why Mitch likes it so much. Goes for two Geomancies and then the close combat, which is kind of curious to me. Goes for one more, two more. Makes the switch, tries to make a catch, but Lando gives him nothing. This is this is a uh, first part of the movie, Lando Cal Calrissian. Just betraying Mitch there, not giving him the catch. We'll see if he turns into a good guy in the end. Second shield comes up here on the Lando. The Sandseer Storms are spinning on the battlefield he's able to build to the moon blast but almost uh, kind of a wasted geomancy there because he does cap on energy he does connect though and that's the top left i think mitch recognized that was a road too far to travel <laughs> next opponent is mad attack let's see what matt has for us it's a zashian and elite we gotta get out of this one that's really bad right right <laughs> mitch stays in here against zashian trying to deal some chip damage i guess it's gonna let it overcharge quite a bit. We know this is gonna be a, a play rough. Oh, actually, uh, close combat, excuse me. Another close combat then. This must be close combat wild charge, which is good information, uh, obviously for Mitch, in case this Ho-Oh finds this, this uh, Pokemon later. I think this is an easy shield by the opponent, right? They double debuff themselves. They know that a potential earthquake is coming. Mitch throws the earthquake anyway, and he does get shielded. I would not be shocked to see a shield here by Mitch, but he thinks Xerneas, oh my gosh, sorry, Xerneas, Zygarde. I keep mix, mixing up the X and the Z. He thinks Zygarde can take the attack, and, and he's exactly right. Palky Origin Form comes in, goes in with his Xerneas this time. Xerneas has a positive matchup. Oh man, Palkia Origin Form lets an entire Geomancy slip through the net. That's gonna be really tough for him. Gonna go for the Moonblast. This is more than enough to KO. I think this will KO a Palkia Origin Form at like uh, 65, 70% health, maybe even more. Comes in with a Ho-Oh though. This is a little sticky, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, he's got his own Ho-Oh in the back. But right now Xerneas is lined up against the Fire Flying type. Going to go for three. I really appreciate the timing there. Three Geomancies for nine turns versus the two Incinerates for ten. Only seeds one free turn of energy and gets an attack fall on the Moon Blast. Mitch might need to catch to win this game. Oh, what? <laughs> Takes the top off of the stadium with the swap. Soaking Brave Bird onto the Zygarde. Comes in with the Ho-Ho. At this point, Zashian can do nothing, right? It's basically just prey out in the middle of an open field to this Ho-Oh. Wild Charge gets shielded up. We knew it was a Wild Charge based on the earlier moveset, so no surprises to be seen there. Sacred Fire almost cooks this Zashian, but the Incinerate will come through. Going to see another Protect Shield here from the Ho-Oh. This is going to be a photo finish for the Shundo Ho-Oh as it comes into the mirror match, goes for the Brave Bird, loses the charge type party tie. So maybe a little bit of a, a jump scare at the end, but this isn't enough. Brave Bird connects. Ho-Oh was weak, but it still has a Brave Bird of its own. The key here is if the Zacian has any energy left. Excuse me, it's KO'd. Mitch is KO'ing these Pokemon so fast, I just can't keep track. That's a 4-1 for Mitch as he continues his climb. Again, these battles are from last season, but Mitch is totally cracked. He, and at this point in the season, 
in the um, World of Wonder season, he'd only done like 300 games or something like that. But he's absolutely crushing it already in the 28s. Check out this next battle, CJUHT, ho in the lead. We know Mitch likes to stay here with the Zygarde because it does have a solid matchup. The ground typing is just so nice here for Zygarde. Not, not even to mention, it's absolutely bonkers. Bananas bulk. I mean, this thing is an absolute monster. Brave Bird barely even tickles. We see the Dialga come in here. Going to fire off an Earthquake. I think the opponent will likely shield this. Oh, they do not. Actually, it sneaks through. That's really nice for Mitch. Going to go for the Triple Incinerates. That's 15 turns up to 20 turns. We know that the Iron Head is all that it can get to. Oh, excuse me. It's, it's Draco Meteor. He got a few Dragon Breaths against the, uh, the uh, Zygarde. That's why Mitch is climbing in Master League. And I'm commentating, right? ho -Oh comes in here into the matchup. Going to fire off a Sacred Fire. This is an easy no shit, I think, for the opponent. And it is. Because they know down his shield, the opponent is very unlikely to Brave Bird right away. Mitch is going to soak a Brave Bird. Does KO the ho -Oh, Comes back in with the Zy. But there's a Zygarde in the back. This is actually really nice because he can reach for the Xerneas. We saw how much an Earthquake did. Not very much. Zygarde always reminded me of Voltron as well. If you look at it, you know, all the different colors. It's definitely uh, maybe a little inspiration there. I'm not sure which came first, but I assume it was Voltron. Voltron's from the 80s, right? Going to go for the Moonblast. Hopefully get a shield and an attack fall. No shield coming through. What is going on? This Zygarde can eat every single charge attack under the sun. Crunch coming through here. That is single resisted by the Fairy Typing. Going to go up for two more Geomancies. Throwing on alignment. Mitch operating like a surgeon here. He's got the scalpel out. He's going to go for one more, uh, excuse me, one more Geomancy into the second close combat. What if we get a switch here? We might just get a switch here. Going in to the Zygarde, throwing the single Dragon Tail and the Crunch with the one turn swap is perfect execution to take away that final Protect Shield. Ho -Oh loses its last protection against the imposing Zygarde and that's another win for Mitch close combats crunches he's doing whatever it takes right meow I need you to like this video because that trainer's name was right meow I assume this is a, a solid matchup for the Zygarde again dragon resisting water but ground weak to it which makes it neutral Zygarde reaching right for the earthquake Mitch is tapping right over it but a, oh an attempted swap he got swapped on one time uh, his opponent's in the holo earlier on in the video one time. And Mitch has not made that mistake a second time. Going to go ahead here for the Sacred Fire against the opposing Lugia. It is a purified best buddy Lugia. Attack does drop from the Sacred Fire there. Lugia returning fire with the Arrow Blast. That attack drop does pay off. Huge dividends here. Mitch going up for two incinerates trying to outpace his lugia and apply some pressure sacred fire does connect another attack fall means this hoho is sitting pretty could even do what he did earlier on and shield and incinerate down and that's what he does i got a jack nicholson nod going on because this is nice <laughs> opponent is forced to send in the kyogre which exposes the opponent and switch locks them for 60 seconds gonna use a dragon tail into an earthquake combination here does chip down that Kyogre quite a bit. Kyogre, I think this is just Surf, right? And Mitch is like, ah. Uh. Zygarde can soak a Moonblast. It can soak a Close Combat. It can it can eat a Brave Bird for breakfast. It can absolutely tank a Surf. Two Pokemon left for the opponent. They are still switched off for probably another 20 seconds or less. Coming in with the Xerneas. At this point, I think Mitch is just, just trying to get a leg up on the four-legged Fairy type. Earthquake does connect. He gets his leg up in terms of damage dealt and now he's able to send his in his own Xerneas into this matchup I think what would really be disastrous is a Moonblast debuff oh and it does happen okay maybe there's play never mind <laughs> the opponent sends in the Lugia and in order to avoid a sky attack Mitch throws a zero bubble close combat just to cut off that energy he's really close to the Moonblast but he's even closer to the back-to-back -back close combats he's gonna fire for one here and I think this gets the shield it does He's got some energy. He's got some time. He built he built up the Moonblast, and he is ready to shine. We're going to see a Protection come out here on the close combat. Moonblast gets fired off, and that is a wraps for Mitch in this matchup because Moonblast is definitely enough to KO the opposing Xerneas. That was actually really nice. He found, he found uh, some creative solutions. Jumping to this next battle, the Prince Madness, Zygarde in the lead. Let's check the 
the uh, combat power here for the Zygarde. 4208, which means Mitch's best buddy Zygarde is superior. Gonna see the Crunch get fired off here first. Trying to apply some Dragon Tail pressure. I like this a lot. Throw the Crunch early. Oh my gosh, dude. Mitch, what's going on with these debuffs, my guy? Uh, that's actually wild. The Crunch. Oh, actually on both sides. What's going on here? Gonna go for the crunch against the opposing Zygarde, winning the charge type priority tie because of the virtue of the best buddy and higher CP. He's got a 14 attack Zy, so you really need that little extra push to get it over these CMP humps. Another crunch connects, doesn't KO. We might even get a simultaneous knockout here. No, Mitch's Zygarde hangs on by just a hair, a sliver, but the Dragon Tail comes through because the incinerate doesn't apply until the end. So he's able to Dragon Tail crunch this ho oh. No debuff. I'm telling you. I, I'm shocked he didn't get the debuff. Honestly, I'm surprised he didn't get it. Ho-Oh mirror match. Very risky to throw the Brave Bird first, but his opponent is able to switch, so we might actually see it. And we do. Gonna fire off a Sacred Fire here. So I need to start, stop saying fire so much, but I just can't help it. Gonna go for another Incinerate. Opponent returning fire with the Sacred Fire. I did it again. Shield coming up. Excuse me, Brave Bird gets shielded up. At this point, this opposing Ho-Oh is very weak. Has done a lot of work, though, taking both shields away from Mitch. He does not get the KO. Or, excuse me, took one shield away from Mitch. In comes the Lugia. He's able to bail out the Ho-Oh, which is massive. Because Ho-Oh could be a great swap later on in the game. Um, no shield here for Mitch. I think he's really worried about the... Uh, yeah, it's too risky, right? It's too risky that early on in the matchup to shield a potential Aeroblast. Because if it's just a sky attack, that is a huge waste. So I really like the judicious approach. Another Moonblast debuff. This Xerneas might be bugged because this is a crazy amount of debuffs. Do we get another one here on the Lugia? Second Moonblast connects. Another attack. Dude, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm putting up my tinfoil hat. Something's going on. But Mitch is able to double drop that attack. In comes the opposing Ho. I think you need to shield here. Uh, you got to remember how much energy the Ho-Oh has. Dude, I think this Ho-Oh is single moved. It just keeps Brave Birding everything. Two Incinerates, three Geomancies. Queue up the close combat. That's going to pick up the KO. Going to look for one more Geomancy, and he does. Pristine Chef's Kiss. Absolutely mind-boggling how Mitch manages his energy. But the proof is in the pudding. Look at this ELO, man. Well, those are all the battles from Mitch. Very, very talented Master League trainer. If you're on the fence about building a Zygarde, I know, I know it's like a ton of routes. I have like 50 cells to my name, but if you're willing to grind it, I definitely think it is worth it. Also, the Shundo ho -Oh was super impressive. Great safe switch, great, great uh, position like builder, right? You can wrestle away, control the matchup with the ho -Oh, and the Xerneas was a powerful sweeper. So I think that was honestly an incredible tutorial of how to play that team, how to break up the Landorus Palkia core as well. Shout out to Mitch for sending me those battles. It was so much fun. More Master League content in the future. Maybe even some Shadow Mewtwo. So stay tuned. See you in the next one.